Hello, fellow 3D printers. I'm Jay Wall with Print That Thing, where we help you learn 3D print design. And today I'm going to be sharing with you the top three secrets. That's six. The top three secrets that I use daily when I'm working for myself or for clients and, you know, to help you learn 3D print design. And so I'm super, super stoked to be here at Verf this year, 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, very grateful to be able to talk to y'all. So let's go ahead and get started. Today, I'm going to show you the three secrets. The first secret is going to help you keep your workflow very flexible, like you're doing some yoga designing. And then the second secret is going to keep you very efficient when you are designing. And the third one, and my favorite, is a super duper thing that I made that's going to make Blender very, very 3D print friendly for you. So how many people out there have tried to learn 3D print design before, maybe stopped, or, uh, you know, I know it can be very, very, very daunting to learn a new skill, especially 3D design, but we use 3D stuff all day. You guys are already used to 3D objects. Now we just need to learn how to control it in a program, really, and then you're off to the races. So I know personally when I first started learning 3D print design, I like started and stopped at least three or four times before I really like committed to learning this skill set. And now that I know it, I am on a mission to teach as many people out there as possible how to do this superpower, how to think of something from your brain, and then, wow, it amazingly just pops up on your 3D print bed. Like It's just creative problem solving at its finest. So that's what I want the rest of the people out there, you, to experience. And really, it just blows my mind how many people out there do not know how to 3D print their own ideas. A lot of people out there know how to use the 3D printer, totally, but like only a small percentage actually can come up with their own ideas. It's just crazy to me. Like it's literally half of the experience of 3D printing is being able to look at things around you and go, oh, I could fix that or I could make that. Like it's just, it's just very strange to me. So I'm here to help you guys and girls do that because that's where the magic is. But enough of me blabbering, let's go ahead and jump on in it. It's time to dive into secret three, where I'm gonna show you the way I use Blender to keep all of my designs super flexible and quick to update. Now, imagine you have a client who can't make up their mind about the style of a design. Uh, have you ever worked with people like that who don't know what they want? Probably yes, if you've ever worked with clients. And if you worked with clients, you're probably aware by now that most people don't know what they want until they see it, right? Well, this is where I pull out my secret weapon, the modifiers. So I'm gonna show you how I take one design and make a bunch of different variations of it. So let's just take this first one here, this red one, and I'm gonna just add a subdivision surface. So we'll just click on modifier, go subdivision surface, boom, looky there. Now we've got a smooth little monkey here. I can crank it up, make it smoother. I can turn it off. See, look at that off and on instant smoothation. That's what you want. Super easy, but notice the bottom's a little weird and not flat. So I can just reorder the modifiers cause they're super flexible. And now we've got a nice flat bottom and that's easy for 3d printing. Now let's move on to the next one and I'm going to add a decimate and decimate is essentially just like low poly it's just lowering the poly count so look in real time i can kind of eyeball you know how abstract do i want this design to be do i want to keep it super low poly or do i want to be able to tell it's a monkey just slide that bad boy around and there you go on and off instant low poly super easy you can do that to any model that you find online or anything you create next let's go over to this blue monkey and let's remesh it. So to do that, we're kind of going to make it like 8-bit. So I'm just going to use this remesh and change it from this to blocks. And that's just going to give it kind of a blocky look. And you can just crank it up. And look at there. Now it's like got this really cool texture. And it only took like a few seconds. So that looks pretty awesome. You can, again, toggle it on and off to see the difference. There's before. There's after. And it looks like we did a whole bunch of work, but we didn't. We just added a modifier. So that's pretty simple. All right, now let's move on to this yellow monkey back here. And for this one, we're going to turn it into wireframe. So I'm just going to add another flexible modifier, and we'll use wireframe right here. 
And there you go. So right off the bat, it doesn't look that good, but what we can do is just type it in exactly the thickness we want. So maybe we want like, maybe something like 2.5 millimeters. So I just type in 2.5 and there we go. It does have some weird spikes. So we'll just uncheck this box and there we go. It's perfect. It's ready for 3D print. And this is how I made my wireframe hat and my tring rings. And it's super easy. And it looks like you did a lot of, you know, hours and hours of work, but it only took a few seconds. And now let's move on to this monkey. And we're going to do kind of some compounds. So I'm going to add the wireframe just like before. But then I'm going to add the subdivision surface just like we did the first one we did. And watch what happens here. We get this really cool Voronoi look, which looks like many things you've probably seen 3D printed. It just gives it this like organic kind of 3D futuristic feel. So that's Voronoi. And it's literally just a couple modifiers. And that's it. And I really like the Voronoi style, so I use that a lot. And next, let's grab the last monkey, and I'm going to show you one that I use a lot. Um, we're going to actually turn this into a mask. So to do that, I'm going to apply this little Boolean operation here, and then go into edit mode, and then just delete the bottom of it, and just say delete. And now we've kind of got it like an open shell. So this isn't 3D printable, but with a modifier, it will magically become 3d printable so i'm going to use solidify and that's just going to solidify this shell here these edges and make it 3d printable so now it's kind of like a mask so if i 3d printed this really huge i could like wear it for halloween or something or you know you can get really creative with the solidify modifier it does a lot of things and there we go and i'll kind of switch so you can see what we're looking at here but essentially it just hollows it out so that's a really easy quick way to do that and look, we've made six designs within a few minutes, all from one single design. So this is very, very helpful in just making super flexible, quick variations or just generating new ideas. And you can compound these modifiers all on top of them, on top of themselves to get really cool effects. So yeah, it's all done from this one monkey here. And that's it for secret number three. Did those modifiers get you thinking of some cool design ideas? I mean, in a few minutes, you just saw me make six variations that I can send to a client as options for them to pick from. It's a super powerful and flexible secret that's going to save you so much time. And here we are, friends, at secret number two, where we are going to go over the secret I have in my tool belt that will help you when designing. Would you be interested in a quick and easy way to fix 3D print designs or get informed about the exact issues within your design? Yeah. Would you be interested in a way to magically join or subtract 3D objects together and be able to adjust them in real time? Mm-hmm. And that, my friends, is something that can be done with just a few awesome Blender add-ons. Blender add-ons are powerful extensions made by Blender and the Blender community that you can turn on to make the software more robust and really help you with your workflows depending on what you're trying to do. Now, Blender comes with a bunch of add-ons that you can opt in and use straight from inside the software. But the ones that I use all the time here at Print That Thing are the 3D Print Toolbox and the Bool Tool. Let me show you some things. The 3D Print Toolbox will let you know the volume. So it'll give you the cubic centimeters. It'll give you the area of your model here, whatever you have selected. You can do solid, which checks if it's manifold or watertight. So that means, you know, if it's 3D printable. So I can go to edit mode, click, is this solid? And they'll say, there's some holes right here. So I can say, oh, okay, the eyes are highlighted. Um, I can also look for intersections. Uh, it'll Blender will tell me if there's any geometry that's like mashing into each other. So lots of issues around the eyes here. So thank you, 3D Print Toolbox, for helping me out. And then we can do degenerate, which there's none here. Uh, we can do distorted. So if we select that, Blender will the toolbox will tell us which ones are distorted. So all those that are lit up, it's kind of hard to see, but the ones around the nose and kind of around the ears, all those are getting stretched way too far. So uh, Blender's just kind of letting us know that. We can also look for the thickness, which is saying the eyeball here is a little too thin or it's not thick enough. We could also do if there's some sharp edges or what's really cool is overhangs. So that's where you would need support material all up underneath Suzanne here you know, it would just be kind of hovering. So that's pretty cool. But you can also use the, the 3D print toolbox for cleanup or export it. So let's make this 3D printable. I'm gonna start by just selecting the eye here and this eye and then popping them out with the selection and renaming the eyes. 
and let's just work on the Suzanne. So I'm going to turn the eyes off. And looky there, there's big holes in Suzanne's head. We can use the 3D print toolbox to help find it. Let me just do non-manifold. And it's highlighting those. And what's cool is you can just hit make manifold. And boom, there it goes. It's fixed. Now it's 3D printable. So that's with the 3D print toolbox. Now if I hit check all, notice the it's zeroed out there. But our non-flat faces is still 22. So there's our 22 faces that are messed up. But what's cool is I can use the 3D print toolbox to fix those as well. So watch if I just hit click this cleanup distorted, bloop, all those have been triangulated. And now if I check all, that's zeroed out too. That's what you want. You want zeros for everything. And then we still have our overhanging faces, but I'm going to show you how to fix that um, after our, our eyes here. So let's just go back to object mode, turn our eyes back on, maybe turn Suzanne off, and let's inspect our eyes. So we're going to use a 3D print toolbox to inspect the eyes. So if we do check all, non-manifold, there it is. It's saying these outer rings right here are just big holes. So what we're going to do is just select them and say make manifold. Boom, fixed. Thank you 3D print toolbox. And now if we check all, it's it's zeroed out, which is good, but we still have the two thin faces. So if we click on that, uh, I can it'll just tell me exactly what the issue is. It's these two polygons that are too thin. So I'm just going to kind of make it less steep. So to do that, I'm just going to grab the, the top uh, little area here. So just grab that, that little line right there. And I'm just going to grab it and bring it down just a little bit. Hit check all. And there we go. Everything's zeroed out. And we don't have to worry about our overhanging faces because these are just eyes. So let's turn on that. But there's still technically two separate objects. So that's when the bool tool comes into play. So now let's go to the bool tool here. And we're going to do a brush boolean union. So click on the eyes. Click right there. Click on the eyes. Click on the head. And then union. Boom. Just like that. We've magically created this to be a solid object. But what's cool is that they're they're still flexible. Like it if it it applied and made the eyes com combined with the head but if i go into my modifiers here you can see that it just added a boolean union for the eyes but it didn't apply it so i can always go back and change that on the fly anytime i want and that's what i mean by keeping you flexible now let's make this where we don't need supports so i'm just going to turn the suzanne sideways add a big cube and then just bring it on down and we're going to use the other part of the bool tool which is the subtraction or the difference so i'm just going to click on the big white cube here that we just added and then shift click on the head and then do a difference boom just like that so you can see that the cube turned into a wireframe and the the benefit is this of this is i can just grab it and cut it up in real time and see you know exactly where i want to slice it so that's pretty awesome and uh I use that all the time and notice we've got two modifiers we can export this out just tell the 3d print toolbox where we want it to go I'll just do the desktop and then we'll just hit export and there we go that's all we have to do to make a you know to fix an object or to make it print without supports and now I'm gonna bring it into Prusa slicer and there's our monkey ready to be 3d printed let's slice it up so looky there within a few minutes we fixed a file added s objects together, subtracted objects to flatten it out, and it is going to be a perfect 3D print. So that's pretty awesome. And I could go on and on and on and on about add-ons, uh, but for the sake of time in the seminar, I'm going to stop here because the bool tool and the 3D print toolbox are the ones I use the most. Now we've covered secret number three, the use of flexible modifiers. Secret number two, the power of add-ons like the bool tool and 3D print toolbox. Are you ready to learn about my number one blender secret for 3D print design? Now, secret number one involves a little bit of a personal hack that I made for myself and students that I'm very excited to share with you in the seminar. And that is our blender hack for 3D printing starter file. You're gonna get this starter file for free today at the end, so let me show you how it works. Now, imagine you've designed something that requires specific measurements, like to the nth degree, and you've put in all this work, but then you go to print it, and it's too big for your 3D print bed. I've done this many times. Uh, so this print file is actually going to show you visually your build dimensions of your 3D printer so you can always have a reference while you're designing things. So when you first open up Blender, it'll look just like this. You'll have a big cube in the middle and 
the dimensions are actually set for meters. So if we have the cube selected, notice it's two meters, which is 2,000 millimeters. Uh, we could switch it, but instead, just open up the file we gave you. Just do File, Open, find the file, click Open, and there you go. Now you're set up. It's all in millimeters. You've got your little monkey here. And notice right here to the side, it's all in millimeters. And there you go. So that's about 15 steps done for you. Also, we have uh, some tabs over here. But uh, I want you to take note of this 3D print volume. And uh, you get to it by twiddling down 3D printer. And then just double click on this and then type in your printer name. So I'm using the CR10. Um, and you can add volume to the end if it helps. And then just go to your information tab right here uh, under item. And if you can't see it, you can just hit in on your keyboard. And then just type in the dimensions of your build volume. So if you have a small printer, you can do 100, 100 by 100. And that'll get you, you know, it'll let you know how big you have to design. But luckily I have a CR10, so I'm just going to undo that and keep it pretty huge. Imagine you have a client who wants to see a product shot or you just want a cool shot of your design for social media before it's 3D printed. Well, this hack file can help you with that too. So I brought in this new design I'm working on. It's called Benchy in a Bottle. And the Benchy is courtesy of Creative Tools. So thanks, Creative Tools. But essentially, I just wanted to make a benchmark to go around the benchmark Benchy. Uh, but let's take a photo of this. So we're going to go over to Studio and then twiddle it down. And we've got our lights. I've got you a camera set up. And we've got this cool background. So all we got to do is turn the background on. And looky there. We've got a nice studio background that uh, you know we can take photos of. So we'll just zoom in and then all you have to do to get a camera view is just hit zero on your numpad and now we're inside of our camera looking at the thing. I've already set it all up for you. All you have to do to take a picture is just do render and render image. That's it. And now you have an image that you can send to a client. Just go ahead and do save as and name it anything you want. I'm just going to call it Benchy Photo and there we go. But it gets way cooler than this. Now let's say we wanted to take a 360 product shot and send it to a client or just post it on our socials. This is how you do it. We'll just click on the Benchy and then take our 360 controller, just grab the object, hold shift, and drop it onto the 360 controller. Now when we hit play, bada bing, bada boom. Now we've got an instant 360 product shot, but it gets cooler than this. Say we wanted to change the colors. So we can go to our colors tab and then just click on the colors and just update these colors in real time so we can kind of previs you know what color we want to print this what color we want to you know we can even change the boat uh, we can do you know blue uh, maybe we want to change the color of the cork you know we can do maybe a green or a blue who knows you know it's totally up to you but uh, this just gets the ideas flowing and you know maybe we want to change the, the background color so I can just click on the background add a color for that and maybe we'll do like a light blue, kind of like they're out to sea. Or, you know, that looks pretty good, I guess. Uh, but really, it's just getting the ideas flowing. Get your mind creativity juices going. But uh, I really like this white uh, bottle here. Maybe make the cork a little more yellow. Uh, maybe a little like a darker yellow. That looks pretty cool. And maybe for the background, let's change the background. Maybe not so, it's not so just dark blue on blue. Let's do like blue on yellow. Yeah, that looks pretty crazy, pretty wild. So I'm, I'm, I'm digging that. Not only that, you can mess with the lights. So you can go to your lights and you can turn off lights. You can get side lighting or, you know, really anything you want to do. Or you can increase the brightness, you know, but everything's already set up for you. And so really all you have to do is just play around and click things until you like it. And then, um, yeah. Uh, once you're kind of ready for that, you can go to your uh, tab here and just click Movie. And then go to Render, Render Animation. And Blender will do the rest for you. And it will just render out every single frame. And there you go. Then you can send that movie over to a client or you know post it online or do anything you want with it. But it looks pretty awesome if you ask me. And the best part about our number one secret is that you get to download this and have it today just go to verf.ptt.live and download it and if you need a little bit extra help or if you need help just learning or getting to know the kind of the backbone of blender then you can take my free beginner 100 course today get going and set up your printer for 3d print design it's going to be crazy it'll totally change your whole mindset of 
and how you see the world around you. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Ver, for having me today. Thanks, everybody, for watching and hope you have a great day and keep creating. Peace.